on behalf of bharti vidyapeet institute of management and entrepreneurship development i dr baljeet kaur welcome you all on the webinar on the leap you need now there is no lockdown for learning at imd we are practicing various online tools and technologies to stay connected with our students and the parents also so this webinar is yet another platform to interact with global personalities all the participants can keep their queries posted in the chat window so all the queries will be taken in the last so let us start this session so i will hand over the session to the moderator of this session dr sham shukla dr sham shukla over to you sir thank you so much dr baljeet uh, for uh, introducing me so a uh, good evening uh, ladies and gentlemen faculties and dear students the theme of today's international webinar is the leap you need now global learning for future leaders at imd a leap is a jump or big step forward it is the state of being recognized by many people aspirants of uh, management mba mca bca bba can take a leap by joining imd a world class institute for global learning for the success and to win as a future corporate leaders i welcome all luminaries who are present here to begin with we have a professor dr samsul bahari bin mohammad tamrin from malaysia he is the director of center of industry relations and network office of vice chancellor industry and community relations university putra malaysia he is also president of malaysian society for harm reduction he is also the immediate past president of human factors and ergonomic society he is secretary general of malaysian federation of occupancy safety and health he is also chair of asian council of ergonomics design he is also co chair of a professional standard and education so we welcome you sir on this international webinar we have another international renowned personality he is the uh, one of the uh, mesmerizing speaker he is having the gift of the gab he did many research projects he visited many countries he is on the ex expert panel of so many government and non government bodies he is also ugc nobly he is dean faculty management sciences bharti vidyapeet deemed university he is the uh, director of institute of management and entrepreneurship development he is none other than dr sachin s varnikar our dean uh, we welcome you sir on this international webinar and look forward to hear you so we have the another panelist here uh, today he is professor dr bernardo nicoletti he is the professor of management sciences and operations management at temple university rome dr bernardo is also a management consultant uh, recently he authored a book on procurement 4.0 and the fourth industrial revolution so we welcome to uh, dr bernardo nicoletti also we are having another um, uh, guest dr sonia bilore from sweden so dr sonia bilore is the professor of department of marketing school of business and economics she is the program head of uh, masters program in innovation through business engineering and design she is coordinator for marketing specialization she is also member of a international committee for the university of sweden linnaeus university of sweden she did phd in management from kyo university japan i welcome you ma'am to this international webinar we are having another guest that is uh, dr shubhash chandel from kuwait he is a veteran hr professional with more than 35 years of experience in organizational development human resources and talent development with the mensis of repute he is a champion motivator coach corporate trainer he is a game changer he is a singer and voice over actor he has trained more than 1 lakh employees he has given more than 30000 hours of leadership program 
He has done hundreds of stage shows. He's also co-written vice for the uh, documentary of Mahatma Gandhi. He also given his uh, vice for the Discovery SD channel and also World Bank. So I welcome Dr. Shubhash Chandra on this uh, webinar. So uh, dear friends, now I invite our Dean and Director Institute of Management and Entrepreneurship Development, Dr. Sachin S. Varnikar, to kindly guide us and welcome the audience. Namaste. I'm really overwhelmed today. We have with us today great personalities like uh, Dr. Subhash Chandar, Dr. Sonia Bilore, Professor Dr. Bernardo, Professor Dr. Shamsul, and there are many participants from different parts of the world. They have joined us for this particular webinar. And uh, this webinar is on the leap unique now global learning for future leaders. As Dr. Sham Shukla very rightly said, at IMED, even in this pandemic, there is no lockdown for learning. We have been trying our best to expose our students to finer and practical aspects of management. Uh, I must uh, introduce Bharti Vidya Pit in brief. Uh, Dr. Sonia Billuri, of course, for the last 10 years is in association with us. We have a faculty and students exchange program with Linear University. She has visited our campus more than five times. Our faculty have gone there, the students have come here, our students have gone there. But I would like to introduce our Bharti Vidyapi to Dr. Honorable Dr. Subhash Chandra, Dr. Bernardo, Dr. Shamsul, and many participants who have joined us today. Bharti Vidyapi started functioning in 1964 as a tiny unit. And today it has more than 180 institutions from pre primary schools to research level institutions. You just name the faculty, you just name the program. And we have it in Bharti Vidya Peet. More than 12 faculties we have under Bharti Vidya Peet. And under Bharti Vidya Peet, which is a parent body, we have Bharti Vidya Peet deemed to be university, uh, which started functioning in 1996. Because of our excellence, we were granted deemed to be university status in 1996 by Government of India. Today, there are 29 institutions out of these 180. 29 are under Bharti Vidya Peet deemed to be university. You all will be definitely glad to know Bharti Vidya Peet deemed to be university is accredited with A plus grade by NAC. It is awarded category one status by UGC, University Grants Commission of India. And it is one of the top 100 universities in India according to NIRF, that is National Institutional Ranking Framework, Government of India. Coming to IMED, the institute that I am the director with, and also the Dean Faculty of Management, we have six management institutes. Uh, one is in Delhi, second is in Pune, which is I'm heading. Uh, we have it one in Kolhapur, then Solapur, Sangli, and Karad. We have six management institutions, and IMED, uh, you'll be again glad to know, that is one of the top 75 business schools uh, ranked by NIRF, that is a national institution ranking framework, Government of India, and continuously last five years, IMED is in top 75 business schools. Now, we all are facing a serious problem, a pandemic, COVID-19, and who would be the right persons than you, than the panelists like Dr. Subhachandra? I happen to listen to him just before this program started for two, three minutes, a great personality, a great motivator, and I would definitely like to have him in our campus. And for that matter, I don't want to miss this opportunity to invite Dr. Subhash Chandra, Dr. Sonia, Dr. Bernardo, and Dr. Shamsul to our campus. We're hopeful by uh, December 2020 will be the end of this COVID-19, and 2021 will definitely enter with a lot of hopes, with new normal, and great opportunities for all of us. And 2021, I'm sure you all will definitely visit our campus. We have already planned an international conference with you all and few more panelists, few more guests, few more resource persons and the corporates and the academicians in that international conference. I declare that international conference on this forum, 
which we plan to have most probably in February or March 2021. And unless we plan like this, because if it is a international conference, we need to plan when in advance. And the great personalities like Dr. Subhash Chandra Banadu or Shamsu Ji or Sonia Ji, if they are to come, I have to take their appointment at least six to seven months in advance. Now, coming back to this global learning. Now, today, today every person has to think global. Maybe at local level he is working, but he must have the global exposure. There is no company today, there is no corporate today which, where there are no people from different countries. Every company, every corporate is a multinational arm. Cross-cultural relations are very, very important. And we all know, we Indians, we follow three very important things. For us, Vasudeva Kutumbakam comes first. That we always treat. The whole world is one family. For me, everybody. Now here we have uh, panelists for five different countries. We have Dr. Subhash Chandra from Kuwait. We have Dr. Sonia from Sweden. Dr. Bernardo from uh, Rome. Dr. Shamsul from Malaysia. Except Kuwait, I have visited all these countries. I've been to Sweden thrice. I've been to Rome. I've been to Malaysia. In fact, we organized a national con international conference with Curtin University, Malaysia. We had organized it about uh, five years back. So we have been there. So for me, it's very, very important to have understanding of cross-cultural relations for every student and every one of us. And we Indians treat this whole world as one family. That is Vasudeva Kutumbaka. Second very important thing that we follow is Namaste and Atiti Deva, Deva Bhava. For us, every guest, now all these great personalities are God for us, Atiti Deva Bhava. So they are, every guest is a God for us. Now we have great opportunities. Now this pandemic definitely has badly affected the world economy. Every organization, every individual has got affected, but everybody is positive about the future. And this conference, this particular webinar that we have organized, we want our students community, the faculty, the corporates, the, our alumni, and everybody who will be listening to us because this is live. This will be also available on the social media. Those who could not join now, they will have an opportunity to listen to all these great personalities. I want all of them to know to be positive. Having listened to these great personalities, I'm sure they will get their eyes open. What exactly, even in this epidemic, even in this pandemic, uh, what exactly we, we need to do? We need to invest in ourselves. We must come out more fitter, more sharper mentally, more energetic, and very emotionally balanced. So this is what is expected in this lockdown. There is lockdown in different parts of the world, but I heard from Dr. Sonia that in Sweden there is no lockdown. They have adopted a different strategy, but whether it is a lockdown or no lockdown, we are hopeful that the vaccine will be launched soon, maybe by September, and we should get rid of this COVID by December 2020. And I'm sure the guidance that we are going to get from Dr. Subhashji, Dr. Bernardo, Dr. Shamsul will definitely help us know what exactly do we need to do now? What exactly do we do need to revive our economy? What do, what do we do, the students particularly, how should they invest their time in for learning new things. As far as IMD is concerned, we have offered them many opportunities. We offered them e-learning opportunities. The EDX platform, one of our alumni offered the Harvard, MIT to IIMs. All these e-learning courses, the certificate courses we offered to our students in this lockdown period. We kept them busy. The IMD Digital Hub has offered many opportunities to the students. And we have already started our online classes, virtual classes. We even have music and art club classes. We have fitness classes. All this is going online. This is the new normal. So there's no lockdown. But being a global, if you want, if you want to be a leader, and particularly post-COVID, what is going to be the environment? How do we prepare for this post-COVID environment? How do we work? How do we plan exactly? So this is what we are expecting from all these great personalities today. And I'm sure 
instead of just thinking uh, what will happen tomorrow, what will happen day after tomorrow, the next month, two months, it's better we know what we can do, better we know what we can't do, and what we can do, we must focus on that. And to be the leaders, we must know what is the future. And uh, definitely, uh, this global learning that we are going to have today from all these dignitaries will enlighten each one of us. And I'm looking forward for this great feast. This is a great feast we have. And I'm sure none of the participants we have joined will leave till we listen the last uh, speaker of this particular webinar. I'll not take much of your time. Uh, Bharti Vidyapit is always on the forefront for us. Students are always a priority. All our activities are students driven and student centered. We have faculty exchange as far as Bharti Vidyapit is concerned. 40 universities we have the exchange agreements. We have collaboration with. There are many research institutions under Bharti Vidyapit. Even at IMD, we have one very important concept that is adopted. That is community work through entrepreneurship development. So we have joined hands with even the smallest businessmen and we are trying to help them develop them and develop this economy. There are many such concepts that we have adopted at IMD. One of such concepts is IAPS. That is Industry Institute Partnership Summit, where in more than 50 corporates every year join hands. They attend our conference, this meet. We have academicians in it and we try to find out the gap between what we offer and what industry expects. And this is how we tailor our uh, programs to the needs of the industry and the society. We have different programs at IMD. We have MBA, we have MCA, we have BBA, BCA, and very importantly, we have PhD program. More than three to four, more than 400 uh, people have completed their PhD from IMD. It started functioning in 78. I'll not take much of your time. We had decided that each of the speakers will take uh, time between seven and 10 minutes. I think my time is up. I take this opportunity once again to welcome Honorable Dr. Subhash Chandraji. It was really great, nice, nice talking to you. And I'm looking forward to listen to you. Dr. Sonia Ji, welcome. Dr. Bernardo, he'll be joining shortly. There's some technical issues. Dr. Baljit definitely will ensure he joins. Dr. Shamsul Ji, uh, most welcome. And I'm sure this is going to be a great feast for all the participants today. Once again, I welcome all of you. And I'm sure Dr. Shukla, now it is over to you. Please take it forward. Dr. Bernardo has joined, sir. He's he's uh, online. Dr. Bernardo, uh, yeah, Dr. thank you very much for the support. Hello. Yes, uh, I can see you. Nice meeting you. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, sir, I just uh, I am uh, Dr. Sachin, uh, Dean Faculty of Management. I just uh, welcome all of you. Uh, welcome to this particular webinar. It is really great. I must thank you for sparing your valuable time to be part of this webinar. And uh, we are eager to listen to you. Sir. So uh, uh, before I invite Dr. Bernardo, I will request Dr. Sonia Bilore, ma'am, to please uh, share her thoughts and uh, enlighten the audience uh, in this situation. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Sham Shukla. Uh, and uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, I know there's a big audience out there. And I'm really thankful to Dr. Wernicker and the whole team at IMED for uh, inviting me to be part of this illustrious panel. Uh, and it's uh, a real honor and a, and a pleasure to be here and, and be able to talk to all of you. Uh, Dr. Wernicker in his um, uh, address has uh, said some very important key things. And uh, I must say that what I'm going to say is kind of going to build up on that. Uh, as a resident of Sweden, uh, as uh, Dr. Wernicker earlier told you all, we do not have uh, uh, a lockdown situation. There never was a lockdown situation. We have certain preventive measures, of course, in place, and there's a big emphasis on social distancing. Uh, so while in this pandemic times, some of these policies have received criticism. If I try to focus on the positive part of it all, 
Uh, I think the policy has largely been on the, the rule of be responsible by yourself. Uh, and I think that is a very important thing to imbibe, not just in case of the pandemic or this entire COVID-19 situation that we have, but even otherwise for our uh, future development, for our future uh, engagement with society, being responsible is a big task. But you can make it fun by really understanding what it means to you, what it means to the society around you, how you need to be active and how you need to be considerate about what is important for your benefit as well as for that of the social benefit. So being responsible can, can be taken as a burden, but it necessarily does not have to be that. And I feel that being responsible by yourself is something that we can take forward as we move and go ahead in these very unprecedented, unpredictable times. Because there is another word that we also keep hearing all these times these days, and it's called the new normal. And uh, my question always is, what is the new normal? Should there be somebody else who can tell us what the new normal is? Or should it be us who will decide what the new normal is? Can we impact the new normal? Can we create a our own new normal. So again, this word is very interesting and I feel that as people who are ambitious, as people who are considerate about society, we also need to think about it a bit and, and, and make sure that the word new normal does not get manipulated in any way. So when combining all of these th different things, uh, and now that we have been facing this situation, at least from March 2020, uh, here at Linnaeus University or even the teachers, the students personally have come to a situation where we think, OK, now it is up to us what we do with our own selves, what we do with the knowledge around us what we do with the resources around us, how do we try to bring it all together and try to create something that can be truly, truly beneficial in the long run. I know that IMED is having lots of activities for students and teachers out there and then you really have a very, very active institute. But again, coming back to being responsible yourself, there is also an inner responsibility at an individual level on how you should deal with these things. Just relying on what the institution has to give you or just putting it on the responsibility of the institution to support you may not be enough, should not be enough. I think you have to develop your own mantras to be able to deal with this kind of a situation physically, emotionally, socially, intellectually. And therefore I thought that I could spend the rest of my time here on this platform to give you three simple mantras or three simple ways of looking at this. The first mantra, be innovative. Be innovative in the sense of not trying to make the pandemic situation an excuse for not doing anything. I think this is also the perfect time when you can do what you haven't been able to do for a really long time. We are living in a world that is full of technology. We are living in a world that is full of technological connections. The possibility of connecting with people from very far off is now a dream come true, just like the seminar, just like this webinar. We are thousands of kilometers away from each other, but we are still talking to each other. Being innovative, therefore, can be used by you in your personal sphere to connect to the people you know to connect to your classmates, to connect to your teachers and try to do something that is co-creative. So that's the other thing, co-creative, collaborative co-creation. Can you think of new ideas? Can you think of new paradigms? Can you think of new perspectives where you feel that, yes, indeed, the knowledge out there is so much. Can I just put it all in together? Can I create something that can be truly innovative and that can truly have a new future, a new sustainable life ahead of it. 
The second more practical mantra that I try to follow and that I have in my discussions here at Linus University come up is the read up catch up mantra. I mean, we have been always been busy with our work, traveling from place to place, but the pandemic has also kind of cooled the system a bit and we don't spend so much time in moving ourselves from one point to the other, going to the university, coming back or just, you know, spending time at whatever institution or university or company or working at. There is a lot of time for us to reflect. And one of the very interesting or amusing things that you can do here is reading. If you can read a lot, you can catch up a lot and the immense knowledge that you are now gaining into is such a true asset to how you can creatively and innovatively use this time that you have with you. Uh, these days again, there are so many seminars, there are so many webinars that are being hosted by a lot of institutions and universities all over the world and participate in them. Uh, catch up on that knowledge that they give you. Do something totally different. Do something that you always wanted to do, but you could never could do. So this is the perfect time you can use that moments for. And the third mantra that I think is very important as a student, as an academician, is to try to be relevant. Uh, these days, uh, as a researcher, I can see that there are lots of calls or lots of um, uh, emphasis that is being given on new knowledge. Because I, I'm sure you all agree what we are facing now, the unprecedented pandemic situation is something that we don't have a precedence to. We don't know what happened in a similar situation before. And this is a global situation. Every new thing or every knowledge that we are unearthing during this time is contributing to a big, big pot of new knowledge. So trying to be relevant is very important. How do I mean here is especially for the business students and the business teachers is that one needs to read up, one needs to do research, one needs to be observant, one needs to compare and contrast different situations cross-culturally or even in your own domestic culture on trying to look for managerial implications, trying to look for policy implications. As business students and as teachers, I think we make a big mark, we make a big impetus there on how managerial policies or other support structures can be changed so that we are more proactive, that we are more well prepared for something similar that may happen in the future. And again, as I said before, by being innovative, by being co-creative, by talking to each other, by using the platforms that you have, perhaps you could try to unearth new ways of looking at culture. You can try to look at new ways of how people behave. You can try to know about new ways of how societies interact in such a situation. Social distancing is otherwise a very, very difficult thing for us to do, but life does not stop. There are new things coming up. So these are all the new innovative new knowledge that you can create. And you may say that well as a student, perhaps it's not very relevant for me right now, but remember that you are from the business world. You are going to go out and work for somebody later on. And all this new knowledge that you have created is going definitely to come useful to you someday or the other. So nothing is going to go waste. Try to look at the enablers, try to look at the barriers, try to look at the challenges, try to look at what can be the positive and the negative points of a situation like these, because this is exactly what academia is searching for these days. Um, in fact, if you do some quick Google search for any topic, you will these days see that there is a lot of pre-print publications that are already appearing on the net. So public publishers are not even waiting for the article or the journal or the research to get published in a physical form. As soon as it is validated, it is being spread to the world because everybody is looking for new knowledge. So we have a lot to do as business people, as people from the business field. We have so much to do really 
And even though it feels like it is a time to relax and maybe OK, now that I'm home, I'm in the safety and security of my of my people around me, but this is actually a great time to be creative. So I think this is some few points that I wanted to share with everybody here. I try to consciously follow these points in my life here in Sweden, although we are not bounded by any lockdown, uh, but even though we have some quarantine situations sometimes or social distancing and but I think this is also a great time to use our resources and develop something new. So I really hope that all those who have listened uh, will try to imbibe a bit by those three quick mantras that I said. Be innovative, read up, catch up and try to be relevant. And I hope this might help you sometime later. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sonia, for uh, enlightening us. If I put in a brief whatever Dr. Sonia has said, so that is uh, the uh, she has told the right thing. She told about the new knowledge, like the situation which has come now. We were having not a relevant knowledge, so she said to be relevant and have a new knowledge. So, so thank you so much, madam, for guiding us and uh, all the students, those who are watching uh, Sonia, ma'am, that. Uh, they must be looking forward like in next time when they will be happen to be in Sweden uh, during the student uh, exchange program. They will meet, uh, meet you, ma'am. So thanks a lot. Thank you so much. I uh, now invite uh, Dr. Bernard Bernardo Nicoletti uh, and um, uh, he, I would like to give a brief because he has just joined. So uh, Dr. Nicoletti, uh, Dr. Bernardo Nicoletti is a professor of management sciences and uh, operations management at Temple University room. Uh, he has just authored a new book that is Procurement 4.0 and the fourth industrial uh, uh, revolution. So I welcome you Dr. Uh, Bernardo Nicoletti and I also uh, uh, inform you about the invitation from our Dean that he has invited you to India uh, next year uh, during the international conference. So, uh, Dr. Nicoletti, now it is over to you. Please enlighten us. OK, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shiam Shukla, for the introduction and for the invitation. I would like also to thank uh, Dr. Sachin Vernekar for the fact that uh, he has organized this uh, very interesting meeting, very international, by the way. I mean, uh, so more and more in the global spirit. Uh, I would like to start with uh, one um, a reminder coming from Dr. Sonia Billore, which has mentioned the, the new normal, the new normal. Uh, something dramatic has happened in terms of this pandemic. And um, uh, as you can imagine, uh, the world is changing and the business is changing in uh, in sync. I mean, because it's not possible just to forget uh, this pandemic and say, OK, let's uh, do business as usual. We are not at business as usual. So what is the new environment would say coming out of this uh, of this uh, pandemic? The new normal, in my opinion, more acceleration of what uh, slowly has already started in terms of digital transformation. Uh, what does it mean digital transformation? What I don't like in the word digital transformation is the word digital because it seems that uh, it's only a technological way to change uh, the situation in the in in the business that is not true business transform, digital transformation would mean essentially change the business model the business model of the business because as i said before it's not possible just to forget what is happening in the outside world but changing the business model what does it mean well certainly one aspect in which uh, the uh, the, 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 the transformation we take place is uh, in, uh, in terms of the processes. The processes will change in a dramatic way. Um, uh, people are talking, for instance, in terms of remote working. People are working more and more remotely and uh, that is all over the world. It's not only in the USA rather than in Europe, but in India too. I mean, uh, remote working has become uh, the, the mantra, another mantra, let's say, of this new normal. In that situation where 
the 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 there is a transformation. I mean, what does it mean from the business point of view? From the business point of view, it means essentially that two completely different fields, which were separate apart in the past, are merging together. One is IT, information technology. In terms of the information technology in the last uh, 40, 50 years, we have seen some dramatic development, continuous development in terms of automation. And IT has become much more intelligent with respect to the past. On the other side, what was happening in the in the in the, in, the, in the shop floor in the in our factories was happening in our factories or in our offices as you can imagine was the automation the extension of automation more and more things which were automated think think about the banks for instance in terms of automation of the atm machine i mean now we can pick up money from every place i mean so automation has been developed until now, the two aspects, IT on one side and operation technology, OT on the other side, have been quite separate. Now they are merging together. So this merge of between IT and OT, between information technology and operational technology, it is merging together and the result is what has been called business 4.0. Business 4.0 means essentially this uh, coupling, uh, this uh, integration of these two aspects. So in that situation, it means that uh, we will see much more continuous processes, uh, which uh, will uh, start uh, in the planning stage, in the design stage of the product and services, uh, which will continue on the shop floor of our business, uh, which will continue in terms of uh, maintenance and support. One particular function which will be important in this grand vision of not anymore a single business but a, an ecosystem of business more business working together will be the role of a procurement and that is the subject of this book procurement 4.0 which essentially envision a completely different uh, aspect of uh, the procurement function in the organization which before was essentially by ordering ordering to 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 and negotiate with the supplier now there's only the problem of let's say the pricing of what is bought but now it is necessary to consolidate in uh, the entire ecosystem in such a way that the supplier are not only just the, the supplier of but they become partner that that is the big change from supplier to partner which means to select a certain number of uh, partners and do with them not only buying and selling but working together in a joint business in an ecosystem this uh, concept of the ecosystem will uh, spread around and in that situation we call it business 4.0 uh, it uh, can be applied to uh, to, 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 to industrial environment, but it can be applied also to the financial services environment, for instance, the services environment. My next book will be exactly that. It will be on banking. Banking, not on banks, it is that. it's on banking. In other words, on the, what will happen in terms of the financial services, where banking is a fundamental function, and apart from banks, there are other organizations which are growing in importance uh, which are called the fintech the financial technology startup and how they can integrate and implement a digital transformation in, uh, in that case of the financial services but in other cases of the entire business process will be an extremely challenging and it's your world uh, we, of course, mean you will uh, go and enter the, the business uh, in, in in a, in a short time, and we will need to implement. And as uh, Dr. Sonia Bilori was mentioned before, innovate. Innovate is fundamental. And uh, so, uh, uh, so take that. This will be your task in the business. Innovate because we do need young people. We do need young people well prepared. And secondly, from IMED, this is what uh, they are they are forging for in terms of the future business uh, in India, but all over the world, because the companies will become more and more global. Thank you very much. So, Dr. Shubhash Chandra, now 
it is uh, i invite you please join and please enlighten the audience and uh, uh, please join thank you so much thank you thank you very much i am not wasting my time jumping to the schedule straight away thanks for having me there today's session is welcome to webinar the leap you need now let me get smaller i will go smaller so you can see me there fine i have short time so let me jump into it and explain to you further first things first firstly i thank each one of you my dear friends salute you for joining this webinar Thanks to Dr. Sachin, Governor, Dean, FMD, Bharat Vidya Vidya Dean University, Director FMD. Namaskar, sir. Thank you very much for inviting me. And my dear friend, Dr. Shyam Shukla, for inviting me here to meet these young friends who are going to be the pillars of a great nation in the near future. I sincerely thank all the dignitaries and presenters who are from various countries. Namaste. Welcome to each one of you. My pleasure to be amongst you. A quick note about me. Yeah, I will mention about me. Just have a quick look of the photographs of the various sessions I have done. I will not take time. Have a quick glance. I will jump into the session very soon. I will take 20 minutes of this. Like I mentioned, I am a HR professional, having spent a lot of a number of years working with 9,000 employees and so on. I am on my own now, providing advocacy training and so on. You can see with various levels of people. What I bring to people is I work with 48 nationalities, recruited 60,000 employees, and work for 37 years. So I know what is required in the world today for somebody to get a job or to be placed in any level. And this I gained after coming to Middle East over 30 years back, where I had traveled to various countries and on my skills. So this is some pictures about me working with various verticals where I have developed people about 100,000 people and about 30,000 students and so on. Like they mentioned voiceover, yes, this voice, and I decided to give voice to Mahatma Gandhi, but to documentary movies, I've given voice to Discovery History Channel and thousands. Okay, jumping into the session, whatever I do, it's you, the students, or the participants who make the difference. So how did you come this far, my dear students? Your studies, the mark you scored, your perseverance. But is that enough to go further? So, what is need today to succeed? What is that leap you need now? That is why when this university started this topic, I was so glad to the right title today. The leap you need now is to acquire necessary skills. The degree three who spoke in front of me mentioned this is the same thing, skills required. So I am referring to that as soft skills. Why do you need soft skills? You certainly need that to succeed in your life. What is a skill? It comes with experience, knowledge, ability, advanced training, competence, mainly because of training. And you have to practice that. Now, what are soft skills? I'm rushing through because short duration. I will talk later on whenever we get to it. Okay. What are soft skills? Hard skills are whatever you are getting educated in. Engineering, arts, anything you get education. Now, soft skills are experience based. Those are people related. It is attitudinal. It is behavioral. It is non domain specific. It remains the same in every profession. You see. It is general. It is situational. How you react in certain situations. It is non technical. It is intangible. It is because of the goodwill which you cannot see, you cannot notice them. It is implicit and that how each one plays differently in front of others. So why soft skills are important? Why is that that topic today? It allows you to effectively work with others. It's a capacity and ability to change in circumstances today. They encompass emotionally based non-curricular skills that are generally measurable but very essential today in the world. In academic learning, when we study, we are trained to do calculus, scientific calculus, and so on, but writing essays and so on. But these things are not generally taught. Yes, I agree, is taking efforts to do this, so generally not taught. In many of the students that are conducted across the world, they keep asking me, so why don't you tell them to add this in the country? Because it is so important when I start blowing it up, they understand more. No matter whoever you are, whether you are a student, 
a sports person or working in a college or working in any university or working in a corporate anywhere, you certainly need to work with people. To need to work with people, excuse me, to need this, to need to work with people, certainly you need soft skills. Taking the time to build effective soft skills can contribute to more efficient and more productive at any given place. Repeat, any given place. So, how does soft skills play a very important role? This is a question we have. It allows us to effectively relate to others. It enhances our personal interaction with people. Very important leading to teamwork. What happens when everybody is satisfied? When everybody is satisfied, the teamwork will end up with superb performance. That is what the world needs to be. The next question is, so soft skills or inborn traits can be learned? No, soft skills can be learned. They can be practiced. And the only thing is, you have to seek for opportunities. Everywhere you have opportunities. So, so what are soft skills? Can we use that? Yes. Too many reasons that from all, from all. Ten are essential. I'm just going to highlight a few of that just for you to understand why soft skills is so important. Communication, adaptability, leadership, assertiveness, and self confidence, presentation skills, like uh, somebody mentioned earlier. Collaborative work, working with so many nationalities. I told you when I came to Gulf, I had not worked for Indians, I have not worked. I have worked with so many people now, the culture, recruitment. I have done at least 100 video conferencing interviews before three years, I'm talking about. And now over 3,000 people I have trained in the last eight months over from my studio. List of, I was not that this much. I learned, I was trained, I was trained in Dale Carnegie, UK. 1995 in UK. That's all I have got of thoughts, but mostly I learned from this wonderful professors sitting along with you. That is why I said Bar Kyalabi University, University is a wonderful platform. And when I heard from the dean, I thought I did not get an opportunity to do it all these things. You have got it, utilize it. Now coming back, one of the skills is communication. You should know how to effectively communicate. I am not referring to just talk English. The meaning, whether you should talk, you should measure, you should listen more than talk. So speaking clearly and politely to colleagues, peers, professors, when you start working supervisors, managers, plays a very important role. And always striving to meet higher standards. This covers writing a very good professional email. This you have to learn now. And ways of communication, it can be verbal communication, body language, like I'm doing now, written communication, which I said, email or official letters, artistic communication, which is a picture depicting something, musical communication, which is the mother singing a lullaby to the child to go to sleep. It's a communication. So then there are different ways of communication. You have to concentrate in verbal, body language, and written communication. Next, I'm jumping to something called assertiveness. You know what assertiveness is? Yes, we all face problems every day and we are able to solve to an extent and we go further. We don't even know that we have faced all these problems, right? But assertiveness is standing for your rights. It's not argument. Understanding when you have to speak, how you have to be polite in getting things done. So learning how to be assertive and confident helps only to face any given situation, because all these students here may become leaders tomorrow. You can become managers, you can become directors, who knows, become CEOs, manage, owners of companies, right? So you have to be assertive and self confident. This prepares you to sit for exams today, interviews, group discussions, talking to others, winning confidence of others, and it helps that confidence within you, which is very important, my dear friends. That confidence within you. Isn't that? And what is self confidence? I'm rushing, as I told you, I'm rushing, but still, you will get that on your head. The greatest thing you can do for your own success is build and learn to show self confidence. Now, self confidence is not overconfidence. Self confidence is that egotistic, is not egotistic or acting like you are better than others. It is true because you are capable of that. Self-confidence is simply the belief that you know what to do and 
exactly how to do it. You understand the line between self-confidence and overconfidence? Self-confidence is a must. In fact, in most of the colleges and schools, they call me for assertiveness and self-confidence just to give the boost to these students. And what are confident traits? Not afraid to be wrong. Because only when you do something, make mistakes. When you make mistakes, you have to go and apologize the mistake and talk to them politely. Accept that. I said, listen more than you speak. Don't come to conclusion. Listen. Another important thing is time management. I have you have 24 hours in common. I have this jacket, you have a better jacket, right? All of us have different, different things. But both of us, all of us have this 24 hours in common. So what we are supposed to do? Utilize it very well. And to my dear students, these three years or five years or the two years what you're studying becomes the most important. Never procrastinate. What is procrastination? Delay. Never delay. If you don't understand, go and check. There are about 34 points in uh, time management. I'm not mentioning. Just, just touching base so you understand what it is. Read with us. Never read with us. One time make a mistake, correct it, and never repeat it. I think Sonia Madam mentioned this. Never repeat it again. And you can add plenty of time stealers. Mobile phone, there, there I see you stop laughing. I see you laughing. You're clever guys. Don't use mobile phone. Do not waste your time with your mobile phones and watching televisions. Spend a little time. If at all you want on the WhatsApp and something. Do not waste your time. You can spend time later on in life, not now. This is precious time for you to develop. The other skill, a soft skill, is ability to learn from criticism. Right? When somebody criticizes us, we are angry. It is insult, sir. I feel very bad, sir. Right? All of us feel that. Learning to accept and learn from criticism is a valuable investment, my dear friends. You have to do now. If, if you've not done it earlier, the ability to listen and accept criticism. Criticism is a key component of self-confidence. For that, you have to listen with an open mind. Listen to others and learn from the criticism. Reflect back what you understood from that. Go to the person, check with them. Sir or madam, is this what you mentioned to me? Am I doing it right? Go. You may feel bad. Overcome that. And never, by God's grace, Never feel insulted. If you feel insulted, you will not come out of the shell. And I want all these participants to become extraordinary. And that is what an opportunity called life is. So the road to success, three simple things. Attitude. Have the right attitude, which will push you to perform. It should say, my dear friend, you have all the capability, do it. When you get up in the morning, you should get up with a positive attitude. Push away the ego away from you. Don't let that ego block you because for many people, it's ego blocks. Push the ego, ego and never have laziness in front of you. Laziness, when you get old, you can do. My dear friends, at this age, you should not have this. Right attitude, push away the ego, push away your laziness. You are in the road to success. So the leap, what you need now, the modern workplace is interpersonal. You need to interact with many others, right? The gentleman mentioned earlier, you are interacting with various nationalities, globally, globally. The, 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 the panelists now are from various countries. I'm from Kuwait. The gentleman was from, uh, what is that? Malaysia, Sweden, Rome. And from India, of course, our professors from India, Dean from India. The better you are in soft skills, you can be a better employee. Now you start that because you are students. Soft skills will be more important and essential. You know why? Because more and more jobs are taken by artificial intelligence. So the key differentiators will be those with exceptional soft skills. So now is the time to acquire all these soft skills in the platform called Yes. With your team, the university. Remember, you should always have this word in you. If not here, where? Here means BBDU, where will you? If not now, when? 
and if not me, which is each individual should think like that, who else can become champions? Pandemic can be a situation which doesn't stop up for performing. We keep learning. BBDU has provided so much of opportunity, right? Keep learning. This short session is coming to an end. You not only feel happy, but you have so much of energy and are able to do anything very well because you have gathered some positivity from all the dignitaries who spoke. I am confident that we, you will be able to take that lead with ease because that lead is this platform where you have learned all these skills. Wishing you the best to all, to see you all sometime somewhere. And the best of part of the world is you, the participants, my dear students. These are all my contacts here. Start the run together, that momentum you need. You need momentum to take the trade, like a cheetah, right? It runs before it bounces. You need this platform called Bharat India. In university is a platform you have. There are various models like e-learning and so on. You have to learn all these things, and when the time comes, you just leave and get whatever you want. Creativity and speed. Because all of us are packed with something called energy and life. It's a one-time opportunity. We have won this and born, come here, we have participated, we have been students now. Now is the time to learn. Pandemic cannot bother us. Humanity will always win. Everything is an opportunity. Nothing should stop us. And those are my social media links. Contact on those. Thank you very much, University. Thank you, BMG. Thank you very much, Uttarali. And Madam Kaur was being so wonderful in organizing all these things. Thank you very much. I will see you soon sometime. Thank you very much. Namaste, my dear students. Keep doing very well in life. Bye. -bye. Uh, Dr. Subhash, very well spoken. You did it, and you have given the right message to our young uh, students. So uh, they, they are now understood how to go ahead in during this uh, uh, tough time. So uh, once again, I thank you so much for being here and uh, accepting our invitation and enlightening the students. I hope that the students would have really felt very, very energetic. It has been your session has been very, very energetic. Thank so, you very much. Thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. So we look forward to see you here again and again, sir. So now it is over to Professor Dr. Samsul Bahari bin Mohammed Tamrin from Malaysia. Sir, please take over the session. Hi, 
environment can't do it. There is a lot of uh, uh, your responsibility as a future economics. Now the thing is that when you talk about economics, one of the things is that is it is, is it uh, a good career to become an economist, and how do you want to become an economist at the first place? So actually, there is a good career opportunity within economics because it is such a very broad area that it that involve a lot of uh, discipline, such as I showed you earlier, the discipline within the occupational health practitioner, engineers, toxicologists, anatomists, physiotherapists, and whatnot. So you can become a very specialized uh, workers in economic or specialists in economic that, that you can work within the field or you can work between the field. So it is a very uh, a good career for you to, to, to further your, your ability in the future. And when you talk about is it a good career, you always talk about you as a young future leader, you always think about what is the salary, how much does it pay to become an economist. So just to share with you, uh, for me, in my country, it is still a good uh, a good uh, pay for you to work as economist. Now, I give you an example here on how much does economic salary pay in the United States. So you look at the price, the salary. So basically, you're looking at someone around the average pay of thousand dollar per year, and that is an average on. the standards and the and the standards and also the uh, the program or the work that we conducted and things have been conducted by the by the uh, economics are highly quality and can serve the nation wisely. Well how about India? So we're talking about India uh, India under the Indian Society of Economy or ISE they try to come out uh, their their own for your own country uh, certification of economy. So basically, this is what India has proposed to have a basic place uh, of six economic, relative economics, environmental economics, and system economics. In which, after you already have your basic degree, you will have to undergo uh, training and knowledge requirement that you have that that uh, you need to to, uh, to have the expert uh, of human teacher and whatnot and to have basic requirements while having it as a priority India having a, such a big uh, continent have different needs regionally so in India what are they also promoting is that if you becoming a uh, you know economist in India, you can also look upon some specific fields such as economic in conditions, economic in agriculture, and for example, international farming, office economics, construction activity, industrial economics, and so on. So, basically, this is what India has been proposing, and we hope that this uh, kind of certification will promote a lot of young leaders and yourself to be the new economics in the future. So by having this, we can have our own economics that is put in the needs of the country while we are able to work simply. Uh, the, the program of the work conducted and things have been conducted by the why the economies are high quality and can serve the nation wisely. Well, how about India? So we're thinking about India. Uh, India under the Indian Society of Economy or IC, they try to come up uh, their, their own for your own country as a So basically this is what India has been proposing 
have a basic knowledge system of physical economics, political economics, and relative economic and system economics. In this, after you already have a basic degree, you will have undergone a training and knowledge requirement that you have that, that uh, you will um, have to be expert uh, in terms of human energy, picture, genetic therapy, and whatnot, and have basic requirements. While having this as a prerequisite, India having a such a big continent uh, have different things regionally. So in India, what they are they also proposing is that if you become an uh, economist in the future, you can also look upon some specific fields such as economic institutions, economic agriculture, and population farming, office economics, construction. Industrial economics. So basically, this is what India has seen, and we hope that this kind of certification will promote a lot of young leaders like yourself to be new economists in the future of India. So, by having this, we can have our own economies that is promoted to the needs of the country while we are able to. Any other countries after we are certified in the So, basically, by do if as a future leader, if you think about what is going on in the future, either all the basic uh, degrees such as medicine or engineers is enough anything for you to become uh, to be highly successful. So, this might be the, in the field of economics is uh, actually additional skill that you might to be about uh, coming up to become more specialized person and you can work not just in your country in India but throughout the world. With that, thank you very much. This is the for India. So by having this, we can have our own economies that is more to the needs of our country while we are able to basically in any other countries after we are being internationally. So basically, by you if in the as a future leader, if you think about what is going on in the future, either all the basic uh, uh, degrees such as medicine or engineers is enough energy for you to become a uh, highly successful. So this might in the field of economy is an uh, additional, additional field that, it, that you might want to take up, uh, coming out to become a more specialized person and you can work not just in your country, in India, but throughout the world. So with that, thank you. It comes for the question and answer session. So I'll invite Baljit ma'am to take the questions which are there for our audience. From our audience, Baljit ma'am. Thank you, ma yes. you uh, Shukla sir. Yeah. Um, so there has been some few questions by the participants. So the first question, and I'll throw to Dr. Subhash Chandra sir. So the very first question is by Mr. Amit. He's saying that during this pandemic time, how to be very self-motivated. Uh, sir, you are not uh, uh, mute, unmute yourself, sir. Okay. You should not have any confusion. Like me, you should not have any confusion. First of all, excited to answer. That's why I did not unmute. Excuse me for that. My dear friend, whoever asked the question, many people across the world keep asking the same question. During this pandemic, nothing should bother us. Avoid watching the television. Avoid watching those messages come to you in WhatsApp. Hundreds of messages giving the figures, don't no bother. Take this as an opportunity where you can gather up. Make use of the time. During the lockdown, all of that 24 hours, right? You were watching movies and think positively. Everything will be positive. Like they were talking about this wonderful session. Remember? They were talking about, you know, why do they plan one year and ahead? I want all of you to take like that. Plan three years and ahead. If you're in first year, second year, two years ahead. Five year, one year ahead. Make all the plan. 
drive yourself to see there the cream in the life, which is that position you want to face. So once you know that you have reached that, it will drive you. It has to motivate. That's why you remember I said three points: the attitude. Have a positive attitude. What is the attitude? You think something bad will happen? No, nothing bad will happen. You are preparing something bad will happen in your career, and today you are vigorous. You are all the strength to perform. So have, bring that positive attitude. When you are working, others are sleeping. You are one step ahead of them. Utilize this time to do that. Don't see the news. Don't see the figures. Okay. Anything else, please? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, the next query is for uh, Dr. Sonali Billori, ma'am. Ma'am, there are many alumni who have particip are participating in this event. Even some research scholar also are also there. So they have a query like uh, during this pandemic time, uh, how they can uh, collaborate with uh, for some research projects. Uh, is are there any opportunity for them for the alumni as well as the students who are currently uh, undergoing research under Bharti Vidya Peet, if they can collaborate for research and for some other projects. Ma'am, we can't hear you. If you can unmute, yes. Sure. OK, yeah, we need to remind ourselves to do that all the time. Uh, but thank you for this question. Uh, and I think again, it's relevant given the context. So for the alumni, uh, I would say that there are various ways you can do that. Uh, the first way is to look around yourself. I mean, in your home, so perhaps you can collaborate with the faculty at IMED to do something collaborative within uh, collaborative research within within the national dimensions. Uh, I am very happy to collaborate with anybody who would uh, like to go uh, in uh, take the next step in, in, in research. Um, so you can contact me at any time. Apart from that, well, I am sure that IMED will also have a contact of many other professors all over the globe uh, who might also be interested to uh, to handshake on research with you. So that is the third possibility. And the fourth possibility is to be part of Facebook forums. So there are specific forums uh, depending on your topic of interest on Facebook. For example, if anybody of you is interested in consumer behavior, there is a specific forum of consumer behavior or even cross cultural consumer behavior or international marketing on Facebook. And these are huge forums. Um, faculty and researchers from all over the world are part of it. Uh, so you can also join. Uh, you, you, you just need to send your application like you do for any other forum on Facebook. And then the world is open for you. You can contact people there on those forums and you can share your interest with them. And I'm sure somebody or the other will always uh, be happy to do that for you. I have also found some very interesting partners for research on these Facebook forums, so I know that it works. Uh, so you can also try that. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm here. I can help you if anybody is interested to collaborate. Uh, and if you want to do something with me, please let me know. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, Dr. Wernicker and um, uh, Dr. Kaur, they have my email addresses, so you can take them from me. Good luck with your research. Thank you, Madam. Uh, the similar query I would like to share, share with the Dr. Bernardo Nicoletti also, because uh, many have uh, referred uh, this query to Dr. Bernardo also. So uh, these are some of the alumni and the research students who would like to know that what are the various collaborative possibilities for research? OK, uh, let me add something on top of what uh, Dr. Sonia Billore has already mentioned. Let me implement with other ways in which it is possible to collaborate. One way, as you can imagine, is uh, connected uh, apart from Facebook with uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn uh, is uh, is uh, more on the business side, so I do suggest that uh, you join LinkedIn as soon as possible. By the way, it's also used by the headhunter, so it's a very good way to 
to to to to also to to be to find jobs i mean which uh, as you can imagine since you are studying it would be interesting for you i mean so but apart from head hunting on linkedin uh, there are many 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 uh, groups like they are called in the case of linkedin and uh, some of them are very specialized and very interesting uh, for instance i mentioned before digital transformation there is a a rather large group on digital transformation. I mentioned about the business model and also in the case of business model, there are other ones. So LinkedIn is a good uh, way to start collaborating. When then a little bit more advanced, let's say, there's another, uh, another website which is called researchgate.net which once again is a, 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 a net, a network of uh, researcher. And um, there too, I mean, uh, as a student, you can join and then you can find lots of uh, materials. And once again, lots of projects like they are called uh, in the jargon of uh, research net, researchgate.net, where you can join uh, in a network and then you can exchange research items, uh, document, uh, uh, publication uh, and so on and so forth. I mean, uh, with the other researcher in the same field. So that's uh, in terms of uh, cooperation through, 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 through the net, let's say. On the other side, as uh, Dr. Sonia Bilori was mentioned before, yeah, you can use uh, the more direct way in the sense that if you discover, for instance, uh, in ResearchNet or in LinkedIn, that there is some specific uh, uh, researcher which you want to contact and work with, then you can uh, write to them, including myself, by the way, I'm in both uh, in both of um, these two, two, two websites, you can contact with them and then you can start collaborating. Uh, take into account that uh, even if, I mean, uh, these kind of tools have been always available with the, the pandemic, as you can imagine, their use has gone up, gone up quite a bit because, I mean, uh, the only way to collaborate uh, is more and more on uh, remotely rather than on face-to-face, uh, -face, which would be difficult also for geographical reasons. So use this kind of, um, of, uh, of opportunity. Once again, we will share through Dr. Shukla our email address and our LinkedIn research gate uh, address. So you can uh, join, contact me or any other person that you think would be interesting in these ways. OK. I Thank have you. one more quick point to say here. Is that OK, Dr. Kaur? Yes, ma'am, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in continuation with what Dr. Bernardo said, well, I also feel that for researchers, one very important point uh, is the funding and, and research grants, They're trying to get money to be able to do some research. I mean, if some of you are interested in doing something cross-cultural, data collection sometimes needs a lot of money or even trying to, you know, now traveling is not so much happening, but uh, there can be various avenues. So perhaps you would also like to open an account with a uh, research professional. Research professional is another gateway. Uh, it's a website where uh, they announce funding and grant uh, opportunities from all over the world. And there are also regional clusters, so you can select the area that you would like to apply grants for. And uh, I think it's a very important, um, it, it, it's a very beneficial thing to have uh, an account on a research professional. Uh, and there they also announce projects, just like on ResearchGate. So you can not only know projects, but you can also know how much money they are giving for uh, joining these projects or or uh, uh, applying for any of these things. So I think that is also a good option for you to be um, con uh, to consider. Thank you. Thank you, madam. And the next query is about academics. So um, I think uh, Dr. Varnikar is already here. So there is no better person to answer about the academics. So there is a question by Mr. Manish Agarwal that uh, how IMED is planning for academics because it is most of the colleges are closed and uh, uh, during this pandemic time uh, so there are various myths about uh, the colleges will open or not reopen 
so uh, there is a question for uh, about how academics is being planned in imed thank you mr manish uh, it's a very good question as i told you all in my opening remarks that imed there has been uh, no lockdown ever since the lockdown was declared in india on it's 6 o'clock on 22nd of march we have immediately shifted to blended learning uh, we have started online classes through our uh, imed digital hub our online classes are going on since 22nd june uh, sorry 22nd june and uh, now for the fresh batch which will be admitted uh, by the end of august and the first september we are going to start the fresh batch as well uh, yeah. we are going to have online classes for them as well already we have the online classes going on from 10 am till 3 pm including not only the subjects like marketing finance hr and all self defense fit india that is some exercises yoga and all imac that is imed music and art club these classes are also on on the online and foreign language cyber security almost everything it's a new normal as i already said and all my faculty colleagues when there is no lockdown from the institute they are conducting these classes through our microsoft team we have excellent ict tools that are procured by the bharti vidyapeeth and uh, bharti vidyapeeth has been on the forefront when it comes to the use of ict so the students need not to worry about we have ensured effective teaching learning till things get normalized we are going to have these online teaching and thereafter once things get normalized even for the uh, the campus where we are regularly going to the campus we have made our campus very safe by using the uh, the thermal uh, social distancing sanitizer disinfectant we have ensured that our campus is very safe and you don't need to worry about when things get normalized we'll have face to face classroom sessions but till then it's online the class is going on very effectively we are always uh, there to help every student of imed thank you thank you sir uh, we are done with all the queries sir uh, over to you dr sham shukla sir uh, yeah. shukla, uh, before that i would like to give some closing remarks uh, based on uh, the various inputs that we received uh, dr shukla hope you don't mind i require just a minute yes sir yeah uh, it's been great listening actually dr subhash chandra dr bernardo dr shamsul dr sonia it was really great listening and in uh, as very rightly if i am to quote dr marshalkar he has been when it is to the, uh, the global learning and uh, when we are thinking about the global economy he once in his uh, one of his best books he has said we need child centered education women centered family human centered development knowledge centered society and dr sonia dr bernardo dr subhash chandra very rightly said we need innovation center world economy so innovate or perish is the watchword so it was really great listening to you all where i again invite you to our campus and definitely 2021 will give us great opportunities to meet face to face i am hopeful for that now over to dr shukla yeah thank you so much sir we are really uh, obliged to you for permitting us to hosting this international webinar and uh, it has uh, been really we are from the bottom of heart we thank you on behalf of our all our students and we have the luminaries from all across the globe and we have listened their uh, uh, their words of wisdom so now coming to the end uh, this is like i would like to thank you all and uh, first i would like to thank dr samsul bahari although um, uh, he was very much tied up and uh, still he has given time and uh, he has communicated about uh, the the career ergonomics we are thankful to uh, professor dr bernardo nicoletti who has accepted our invitation 
without uh, much of uh, agitation and he has even since morning he was trying to do the we were trying to test so that the things go rightly so really sir we are honored having you here in india and the i think india has listened to you in the right uh, tone so thanks a lot and we look forward to uh, invite you again and to be that you be here in india we we ensure that you are here sir uh, thank you we, yeah th thanks a lot thanks a lot we are thankful to dr sonia bilore who has given the right insight and uh, she has talk about the what is what are the keywords which the investor should use for the future so thanks a lot dr sonia and keep guiding us be with us thanks for your collaboration uh, with india and uh, yeah, keep doing the good work for india so now the uh, dr shubhash chandra uh, shubhash chandra really uh, dr shubhash chandra has done a great job he has in the short uh, 15 20 minutes he has enlightened the students so we are thankful to you